Hello again. In this video, my aim is to show some of the common DNS misconfigurations that people have in their Windows networks or their Active Directory networks. So at the moment, all of my client computers, so Bob's PC and Jane's PC, are set to use the Windows server, the Active Directory server, as their DNS server. The Active Directory server is also set to use itself. In the DNS server, on the server, it's set to forward requests onto my broadband router. On my broadband router, it is at the moment set to do lookups with the root domain controllers or the root servers. That's not typical. Normally, you'd be set to use your ISP's DNS servers, or in this case, I'm going to use OpenDNS. So what will happen now, when a request is made from Bob's PC to visit a website, it will send the request to the Windows Domain Controller. The Windows Domain Controller will send the request to my broadband router. My broadband router will send the request off to OpenDNS or, in the case of, say, a BT Home Hub or a BT Business Hub, it will send it off to BT or a Virgin Media Hub, it will send it off to Virgin Media, etc. So while it's in this perfect, or what I would call perfect setup, I'm going to do a DNS benchmark and we will try and note down the results and see what the difference is when we change our setup to be an invalid setup. So I'm going to remove all the default name servers. I'm going to be testing just the Active Directory server. So if I run the benchmark and we'll see how quick it is. So the results are cached queries are returned pretty much instantly. Doesn't even look like it takes one millisecond to do that. Uncached results, so results that have to go off to the internet is be, are being returned in 55 milliseconds. So now if I go and do one of the common mistakes that happens on a Windows server, which is we'll start just by removing the forwarder. So what would happen now is if a request is made from Bob's PC, it will go to the domain controller, but the domain controller does not have a forwarder set up, so it will go straight to the root servers and do the lookups itself. So we're comparing against 0 and 55 milliseconds. I'm going to have to note that down because I will likely forget. So we've gone from having cached results being 0 milliseconds and still cached results are 0 milliseconds, but uncached results are now taking about 1.8 seconds to do a lookup. And that's because it's quite inefficient using the root servers. So for every single request it has to go to a-root server and then ask for the name servers for .com and then it's got to go and ask those for the subname servers for the hosting company that the person's with. It just takes a lot of time. 
and I believe this red line here might also be the number of queries which have failed. Yeah, so about 4% of queries have also failed. So if you've got users who are like, oh, you know, sometimes it, it fails to go to a website for the first time, <clears throat> or it's taking a long time to look up websites, that's quite often because you do not have forwarders in your DNS server. The other mistake that happens, and especially if people have changed ISP and you're no longer authorized or allowed to use the forwarder that you have in here. So if I fill in the wrong IP address, like 98.35.15.65, that's not going to be a DNS server. So, for example, if that was valid and that was my old ISP's name server, but I've since changed ISP or moved my router's IP address and that IP address is no longer valid. That will also cause a problem. So we are still zero milliseconds on the cached and that was 1.8 basically on lookups with about a 4% drop rate Let's up with Windows Server using incorrect order and let's rerun this test So we've now gone, the cached is still zero because it takes no time to return a result that the server already knows about. But where we na uh, we previously had 1.8 seconds when looking up a name when using the root servers, when using an invalid server, it's now taking 4.1 seconds, or yeah, 4.1 seconds. So we're still zero on the cache and 4.1 seconds to do a lookup. That will be because in the server settings in forwarders it says number of seconds before uh, a query times out so three seconds we still also have the use root hints if forwarders are unavailable so that four seconds is probably the 1.8 seconds plus the three seconds for the timeout to the invalid name server so it's very important on your windows server or in fact almost anything to make sure that your dns servers are correct and let's have a look at the failure rate. So we've got a similar 4% failure rate on lookups. And again, that will be characterized by people trying to go to websites on their computers within your network and either it failing uh, a small percentage of the time or it taking five seconds, 10 seconds for elements on the page to even start loading. Uh, also, if you have a strict firewall which is blocking DNS queries going out and you have to use the valid name servers, this use root hints will not actually work. So most of your users wouldn't even be able to get to websites at all because your server would be sending the DNS request to an IP address which isn't responding and it could then also not access the root hints because of your firewall. So let's move that back to a sensible setup, so 192.168.0.1, which is my router, and we should now be back to the initial 55 milliseconds lookup. So we're down to 50 milliseconds, so we're back to how the, that setup should be. So this computer is doing the lookup on the server, the server is sending it to my router, the router is then sending it on to OpenDNS. So the next misconfiguration I'm going to do is remove the DNS server from my router and instead set it to go back to the server so what will happen now is a request will go from Bob's computer it will go to the server and the server will then try and send it to the router 
but the router is going to send it immediately back to the server so we'll end up with a loop and it's going to I don't think I've ever done this test before uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here and interestingly it is managing to do some kind of lookup we're probably going to be uh, similar to the one where it just has an invalid name server Yeah, so we're back to invalid name server, so it's taking three seconds. That's an unusual configuration to have, but just a demonstration as why you, you really do want a good name server set up or DNS set up with everything going to the right place. So I will remove that and put my normal broadband router back to using open DNS. So the other misconfigurations you can have is where somebody in, for example, the DHCP settings has set computers to be given your server, but also an external uh, server. And this is quite common. And the reason you do not want this set up, where you've got your server and an external server, is this server, your Active Directory server, will give slightly different results to open DNS and especially when looking up hosts within your own network so if I do a lookup directly on the server for server 2019 dot bobs widgets dot internal I get back a result if I perform that same test with the other external DNS server which has been set, it's saying it can't find it. So you'll be in a situation where, depending on the server that the Windows client or your client or desktop computer decides to do the lookup with, it will either look it up or it will fail to look it up. All the external websites, so websites on the internet, will work but possibly or potentially 50% uh, of your lookups for computers within your network will either have to be retried if Windows is clever enough to go oh I didn't get a result from the first server let me try the, the other server uh, or it will just fail the first time the user then has to refresh which makes it send the request and gives a chance of it going to the correct server so having that split setup of DNS servers one internal and one external is bad. And the same sometimes in the static IP address configuration of a server, instead of it just using itself, and if I can find the control panel applet, instead of it just using itself, sometimes I see that, but then I also see that somebody's filled in open DNS as well and that's incorrect you, again you don't want that because if the server is trying to look up something within the network it may go to the wrong server so for example send it out to open DNS and open DNS won't know anything about uh, Bob's desktop PC dot Bob's widgets dot internal so let's correct that on our DHCP leaving just our server Anyway, the purpose of this video is to show that it's very important to have a 
well understood and well flowing DNS setup. If you don't, you end up having requests which take four seconds or requests which just fail entirely and also have a certain percentage that drop because the lookups have failed. Um, it's worth making sure whenever you do visit, say, new client sites or sites where somebody may have set it up incorrectly, that the client computers are looking up on your Active Directory server, that the Active Directory server in its network settings is set to use itself as the DNS server, and that within the forwarders of the DNS server, oh, I'm in DHCP, sorry, in the forwarders of the DNS server, that it has a known working DNS server to look up on. That could be OpenDNS, or if you know that your router has the correct settings and is reliable, that could also, like it is in this case, be set to your broadband router. The other thing is to make sure that the broadband router is then set to look up somewhere on the internet rather than sending the request back into your own network and onto your own server. Hopefully this has been helpful to somebody. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel. Don't need to have the new video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really help. Just a quick interjection as well as something I recorded after the fact and have spliced into this video. If you have a long set of incorrect or invalid name servers or forwarders in your DNS setup, it causes even more of a problem than having just one or possibly two invalid name servers in your setup. So where with an incorrect name server where the forwarder isn't responding, it was previously taking 4.1 seconds to do a lookup with a 4% failure rate. With four invalid servers, is now failing to do any lookups whatsoever. If I remove those four, or if I remove one and we'll get we'll basically reduce it one by one each time and see at what point it actually starts responding with some results. Right, so we have to get down to two invalid name servers before we start getting successful lookups. And even then, it's taking eight seconds to do a lookup, which is double the time there, which kind of makes sense. You've got two invalid or two broken name servers. So it's taking eight seconds with a 43% or 44% failure rate. So the interesting thing to see in here will be if I add in to the mix another set of, say, three invalid ones, and then one valid one. What happens to our results? So this is using three incorrect forwarders and one are valid. Uh, so as with the last set I tried, obviously when it responds, it's responding quickly, so 200 milliseconds. But we do have a huge failure rate, so 75% of lookups are failing. Just make sure that your DNS settings are valid, accurate, working, because if they're not, you're going to get some really strange results, intermittent website lookups, and just generally very unhappy users.